Hi there! This video is created to help you understand more about types of quantitative research. So keep watching something that researchers start by asking you a question. Why do we research and how can we determine our research problem? Well, life is not always a bed of roses. It is made up of both negative and positive aspects of life. And of course, each one of us are experiencing negative because this is a natural occurrence in life. And this situation in life where you find difficulty in finding answers to your questions causing you to worry, perplex you, is called a problem. And by nature, every person doesn't want to stay long in a problematic kind of life. Once you encounter a problem, you immediately would like to find ways and means to free yourself from such puzzle in your life, right? And because of your curiosity, you get to ponder on a problem that needs answers. You think of what to solve, whom to ask, where to go, and how to do all these things that you want to happen just to find the answer to your problem. And behaving this way, you are then confronted with a research problem. In other words, a research problem is something that nurtures in your mind a difficulty or uncertainty that is enough to push you to do an empirical investigation where whereby you you search for answers to a problem by collecting and analyzing data or information so you could find the right answer or solution and as you adopt an empirical attitude towards your problem in a way that you, you depend on your sensory experience, you conduct experimentation, or perform a scientific method in arriving at the truth about something makes your problem irresearchable. It should not be subjective at the same time. You might be asking me sources of quantitative research problems. Well, we could find it. What are the things around you that that could trigger your mind? Think about one problematic area in your life that you want to look empirically or experimentally. It could be previous research that you wanted to validate because there are some inconsistencies or discrepancies. You could also find a review of related literature regarding the topic. It could also be your own experience or any genuine interest in something. Well, you came to know through the previous lessons that quantitative research may be either non-experimental or experimental. And experimental has two types, true or quasi-experimental research. Well, these two are similar, like both include selection of subjects. You have pre, post test, treatment or control group but one major thing is different take note the selection of respondents for true experimental research it requires random selection of participants and the absence of random selection of participants it denies its identity as a true experimental and it converts into a quasi-experimental difference is the manipulation or controlling behavior of the researcher Independent variable for true experimental research is manipulated. But for quasi-experimental research, independent variable cannot be manipulated. Let me give you an example. Effects of good family upbringing to good performance in class, which is the independent variable. Good family upbringing. Can this variable be manipulated or changed or is it naturally formed or pre-existing? It is naturally formed and your participants are not randomly selected. You choose your own participants according to the characteristic you need in the study. So this problem, it is called quasi-experimental. On the other hand, experimental research is in the form of laboratory study or field study. So your independent variables is manipulated or controlled by 
you to determine its effect on the dependent variable. Example, effects of counseling and medical treatment on alcoholism. You have two independent variables there, counseling and medical treatment. This doesn't happen naturally. You have the control of when, how these are applied to treat alcoholism. Then you find out the effects of them to the dependent variable. Non-experimental research shuns controlling variables. Any test types, but take note on this. It has major type, we call it as descriptive research, which can be combined with subtypes. Survey, comparative, causal, and correlational. But of course, these subtypes can also stand independently without any combination. Let's define descriptive. It aims only to identify the definition or description of something. It doesn't ask the why, since it is designed to give answers only to the who, what, when, where, and how of the research problem. Examples, study habits of senior high school students of Lipa Adventist Academy. It means that you describe only the study habits of these high school students by means of providing descriptive statements from your literature in a given structured questionnaire that will be used for the respondents to assess their study habits. Example, youth's perception of the 2016 election. So the same process from the previous in which we only give descriptive statements through a questionnaire that will be assessed by the respondents according to their own perception okay for comparative research it states the similarities or differences between or among people things or object example a comparative study on students preference of learning modality you only determine the preferences of the learners and you find the percentage of students who preferred online learning and then percentage of students who preferred modular learning and then you compare which one is higher than the other but of course it is not limited to that kind of comparison and then for correlational research it shows the extent of variable relationships that is whether it is negative or positive relationship exists between or among them you use statistical tools such as t-test, p-value, etc. But just remember that correlations range from negative 1 to 1 indicates the strength of the association between two variables. If the value is positive between 0 and 1, the value of one variable increases the value of the other does as well. If the value is 0, to negative 1, then as the value of one variable increases, the value of the other decreases. Example, the relationship between educational attainment and successful career. So you determine the value of these two variables, educational attainment as your independent variable and successful career as dependent variable. If there is a positive relationship between both variables then as the value of your independent variable educational attainment is high your prediction is that the value of your dependent variable successful career is also high which can, could be interpreted this way educational attainment could possibly be a factor for successful career however it does not promise the accuracy of such interpretation. Last is a survey research. It is all about gathering information from people about knowledge, opinions, and attitudes and value. What is the difference between descriptive and survey? Both uses questionnaire as instruments in collecting data. But descriptive, it only states descriptions 
while survey, it is a general collection of information. One good example is a health examination survey. They ask you a lot, your blood pressure, high temperature, food preference, and more. However, for descriptive research, your questions are only limited to the descriptions. Of course, it depends on the limitation of your descriptive study. That's all. Thank you for watching. I hope you find it helpful to understand the types of quantitative research.